Here we are with Dominic Cooper, who is famous for getting a break in the stage of all places in London and Broadway with the Tony winning The History Boys, and then on to Mamma Mia, last year's incredible movie, An Education, and now Tamara Drew with the great Stephen Frears and Gemma Archerton. So, uh, Dominic, I guess the first question is, what do you look for? Uh, when you take a part? Did you say, I always wanted to be a, a drummer in a rock band, as you are here in Tamara Drew? Um, I, it's some, definitely something that I, I wanted to give it a, try my hand at, being a rock star, and having the opportunity to actually um, work with my brother, who wrote the music uh, oh. for the piece. I knew, I knew it was very important that in this particular film you had to believe that this band was real and this band the two 16 year old girls were obsessed with the people in this band and the music this band had ma made so I, I thought Stephen might be a bit dodgy at, at um, choosing a teenage cool hip band so I, I got in contact with my brother and we wrote some music and we recorded together which was great fun recording together and then performing in front of an audience who was obligated to enjoy the music at the rock festival was fantastic <laughs> well what's your brother's name? Uh, Nathan, and, and, he, and he's called Kid Cassio. But so he's already. He, I've always watched him in bands growing up, and actually, I probably now I I only just realised this, but actually, the character in Tamara Drew, um, <laughs> it's probably lightly based on some of his behaviour when we used to go on holiday. He used to hate going to the countryside. He couldn't stand it. He used to want to be in, back in London writing music, and he used to write all these songs when we forced him to go to France. He'd wear he'd, he'd wear sort of tight leather trousers and sprayed hair to go and sit next to a river in, in 90 degree heat <laughs> moaning and writing music about how dull it is in the country so you uh, ben your your character you could say was inspired and patterned after i suppose so but i mean that sounds terrible because he's such a it, it, i mean personality wise he's nothing like my brother but it, just for that for the reason of how much he dislikes the the outdoors and the countryside just doesn't get any or understand any of the people that live amongst it i suppose and and some other musicians who i've watched growing up and, and who I've come to know. I suppose it's loosely based on them, but I couldn't possibly ever say who in case God, I caused serious offence. Well, how important is, is it for you as an actor to find some kind of real-life counterpart uh, to take... You know, I, I was hearing an actor, the other, uh, Edward Norton, actually, was saying that the method, when people talk about it today, it's not really anything of what... Stanislavski or Strasberg originally intended, which was to go into your own sense memory and create a, an emotion for a scene from something in your own life. He said people really don't do that nowadays. And he talked basically about fashioning his wow. characters from his the sense. exteriors of people that he would meet. He would tape voices and get their, get their you know, body posture or the look of them and use that for his for his mm, character. Well I suppose everyone has a different technique and uses different methods and it depends what the um, character requires, what the piece requires. You know, some you, you need to invest much more and you need to get under the skin of the person who you're portraying. If it's a real life figure for example, I just played Saddam Hussein's son. Oh my god. A maniac and um, a monster. Uday? Uday. And I, I also played his his double, he forced a guy to be his body double, um, who's still alive, who I spoke to a lot. And from you know meeting him and from learning about what this guy did and where his behaviour came from inside, because he was such a deceitful, he was, he was a terrible, terrible human being. Sadist, so he, he, dumb, he, yes, all those things. He, drug he, addict. Yep, he was out of control and he had no law, there was no law ever stopping him from doing what he pleased because his father was the dictator and uh, had complete control. So for a character like that, I had to uh, try and find something, you know, I, had, I couldn't just put on a, uh, I couldn't just display it, it had to come from some dark place from within. Um, and, and it took a lot of emotional work and it was very draining, whereas doing something like um, Tomorrow Drew, where I'm playing a rock musician, I've seen people like that and I kind of can, I hope, convey you know, the essence of them. And it was also taken from a graphic novel. So, I mean, they couldn't have been more different, the approach to how I worked on those two characters. And, you know, some people would maybe say, well, that's lazy, you should, you should approach all characters in exactly the same way. But some are much more challenging than others. And um, yeah, Mamma Mia? 
Well, Mamma Mia, you know, you needed to you needed to try and put a, a, get a story across through music, which is a totally different thing altogether. You're 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 it's so far removed from reality, but at the same time, to make it convincing, you have to you have to use these ABBA lyrics and try and convey an emotion. So it's a different, again, totally different. And, but that all those things that are required and those differences make the make it a fascinating job. That's why that's why I do it. And then on, if you're doing a Greek tragedy on stage, which I did like you again, just did with Helen Mirren, yeah, then you have to do. It requires something completely different again. Um, equally as exhilarating, but in totally different ways. Um, and that's very challenging because vocally, that's uh, that's challenging. You know, that's the main thing: getting the, um, the, the the rhythms of the piece and and the we we performed that in a amphitheatre in Greece in a place called Epidavros in front of in a 15,000 seater arena without mics so you know again your challenge is to, to try make find a truth in something that ultimately you're talking about monsters coming out of the sea and the gods things that you don't necessarily believe in but you have to make it real and then you have to amplify it to a point that's completely unbelievable and how you'd actually talk to anyone in real life but find an inner truth to it and that's again so it's all those different things and you saying Ed was saying that about how he finds because that's his method and that's what he uses he's a fantastic actor um, but yeah ob and observation is another huge key element and the moment I remember Alan Bennett saying something really interesting when you did the history yeah plays. which was for him as a writer he must stay amongst people and the people in which he writes about. That's why he gets the bus every day. That's why he walks, he rides his bike, he observes. Because if he stopped observing, he'd have no idea about how human behaviour and how people behave in, in society. And I've heard that's the same thing for rock stars or famous actors, well, actors that you can't go out in public without everybody looking at you. Well, that's the. Th I mean, I think that's probably the danger and, and, and the thing, uh, I suppose it makes it quite sad for actors who are massively famous, is that they... Um, retreat and become maybe more reclusive or just stay in a, in a comfortable environment amongst people that they care for enough because they can't bear being ogled at and stared at the whole time doing the, the mundane activities of, of normal life but the, um, the unfortunate side of that I suppose is that you can't observe the people in which you want to play right um, and yet and you know it's all those things that of course that's where every actor gets his, his or hers um Ideas from it from real people watching and observing how how we we behave. Otherwise, well, it becomes very stilted. What was the play you did with Helen Mirren, the classic Phaedra? Phaedra, where the mother uh, ends up in bed with her son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the stepmother. Stepmother. So the father's gone missing. The father, he he's been kind of frantically looking for his father, and he doesn't know where he's gone. And he goes, he wants to go and search for him. And the mother finally declares her absolute love for her stepson, which then causes, he detests and he re re finds it repulsive and repellent and pushes her away and then the father comes back and she has to, uh, she cr creates a massive light, it's a big, it's a terrible, terrible ta story. And um, a tragedy. And a massive tragedy. And it was filmed for a broadcast yeah, from the National Theatre? That's right, and it was performed here, I got a text from someone the other day saying they went to, to watch it two days ago. It was, they broadcast it again a year later. And I was quite tempted, it's such a different experience, but to go, I was quite tempted to watch it. I never saw it, but obviously because we were performing it live at the time it was, <laughs> yes. went out, but then they did, they, they, they put on a performance for us a bit. But I never went to see it. I was too, certainly at the time, too terrified to watch it while performing it in case it affected the performance in any way, but even now, it's, it would be. I find it a very dif difficult experience. So again, going, how does Dominic Cooper choose what you want to do? I mean, Phaedra with Helen Mirren seems to be an ir irresistible thing, and it is, yeah. but it is on stage, and a lot of uh, actors once they get into movies, they go, "No, I'm not going to yeah. do that anymore." But in England, it's certainly there's this tradition of you do TV, you do movies, you do theatre so. all the time. That's, that's what's wonderful about it, the, the choice. And the, yeah, I think, and I think it's very important. It depends, you know, again, people are very different. But I, I start, that's, what, that's where, how I fell in love with this job or doing this work or, or to perform 